Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Teva API webinar. The topic for today, good morning, first of all, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, we're happy to have you here. Today's topic is pharmaceutical co-crystals, targeting, selecting, and regulating for success. My name is Tammy Ben-David, and I'm the host for today. So the plan for today is that we're going to spend about 35 minutes discussing the benefits of enhanced physical and uh, chemical properties of co-crystals to upgrade drugs in pharma projects. And then we're going to allow for about 10 minutes at the end for questions. So please feel free, any questions you have, to pop them down at the bottom in the box. And at the end, our speakers will answer as many as they can. Okay, so now uh, we're going to, I'm going to introduce you to our three amazing speakers for today. Um, welcome to Ananta Rajmohan, Diana Skalik Samek, and Maital Piran. So I'm gonna give a word of introduction to each one of them before we dive in. Ananta is the head of physical R&D India uh, at Teva API and has been at Teva since 2015. Altogether, he has 17 years of experience in pharma and is the, an expert in solid state and polymorphism, including polymorph screening and the characterization of complex APIs. Diana is senior team lead within Teva's, Teva's uh, physical characterization department and has 18 years of experience in the industry overall. She holds a special interest in polymorph, co-crystal and alternative salt screening and has a great passion for creating new polymorph and salt targets. Metal is head of global physical R&D and has been working at Teva API for 13 years. She leads a global team of product managers and researchers specializing in solid states, API crystal forms, and particle and powder properties. So now, uh, looking at the agenda for today. So first of all, we are going to talk about um, choosing the right target for your API. And we're gonna start with an enter. And then we're gonna look at the definition of co-crystals and what it actually means. Then we're gonna go into the advantages of co-crystals, any regulatory considerations that we may have surrounding co-crystals. And at the end, we're gonna talk about a, a use case uh, for co-crystals. And then right at the end, as I said, we'll go to questions. So please feel free to, as I said, to, to put down any questions you have in the box. Okay, now, Moving over to Ananta, please begin. Thank you, Tami, for the kind introduction. I thank Teva AP API R&D management for arranging this webinar. Hello, everyone. I am Ananta. I personally welcome all the participants for pharmaceutical co-crystal webinar. I assure you, at the end of the session, you will get confident to select co-crystal for your drug product. Without wasting my time, I will take you through the first two section of today's agenda, choosing the right target for development and co-crystal definition, preparation and characterization. Choosing the right candidate. Drug discovery development. We all know that drug discovery and development is a complex, lengthy and risky process. It takes 10 to 15 years for a drug to get final approval from FDA. Drug discovery starts with thousands of molecules. After filter through stringent regulatory process, it ends up with a new, few hundred molecules in preclinical research and further narrowed down to less than five molecules in clinical research. Finally, only one molecule will be approved by FDA. Billions of money went into this process. Clinical studies takes most of the time and money. After selecting the active molecule, you know, 70% of the drug approved by FDA are solid. So along with selecting the active molecule for development, selection of right solid candidate is very much important. Next. Design of solid drug. Start with the active molecule and then salt screening and po character polymorphic screening and characterization of the API and then further down to scale up clinical and pharmacokinetics trials, and then process development, and then final drug product. The block solid line, which represents the common pathway for the drug design. The dotted red line represents if any failure or any, any desired result, back and relook. Once the active molecule is identified, it's undergoing solid state screening like salt screening and polymorphic screening. Every new candidate is characterized. If you are not able to get 
or find a polymorph with the desired property, we will go to salt. Generally, salt has higher solubility due to their ionic nature. We, we may also move to amorphous and amorphous solid dispersion to fix the property. If you see the left hand side, coke crystals plays very important to role to improve the physicochemical properties of a polymorph and a salt. Every salt and polymorph can produce coke crystal. And the right hand side, if you look at, it's a material processing which involves engineering uh, process like spray drying, micronization, granulation, etc. Coke crystal showing very good processability. Many research papers are published in this area also. Next. Solid forms of API. It's a well known flow chart. Pharmaceutical solid form either crystalline or amorphous. Right side is amorphous, which is not our interest of discussion today. Yes, truly the interest is slowly changing from amorphous to co crystal. Crystalline is further divided into single component and multi component crystalline. In single component crystalline system, we can call it as true polymorph, which has no solvent or no counter ion in it, only one single component molecule. In multi component system, there are more than one component present in the crystal lattice uh, called solvates, salts, and co crystals. All these four crystalline system single component crystalline system, hydrate, solvate, salt, and co crystal shows polymorphs. Next. Choosing the right target. Choosing the right target is not as easy. It is as difficult as choosing a life partner. The solid form should be stable and reproducible at large scale and commercially viable one. The target should have desired solubility, particle size, density, flowability, hygroscopicity to match the bioavailability of drug product. The right solid candidate is should be stable in all stress condition like strong grinding, milling, temperature, humidity, etc which gives very good processability for the formulator and the so right solid form always create value to the business and people's life like polymorph cocosal are so patentable ip gives us advantage and rights co crystal is reproducible and it enhances the property of api has good processability it creates value to business without fear we can choose co crystal for our drug product. Next slide. In this section, we will see the definition of coke crystal, preparation of coke crystal, and its characterization. Next. Uh, coke crystal uh, differ from, you know, well-known uh, diagram. Amorphous down has structure. Polymorph has a very good structure arrangement. And if you look at coke crystal fall in the multi-component system. Coke crystal are very similar to solvate. In both, it contains more than one component. The difference is in solvate, one of the component is liquid at room temperature. There's a main difference. In coke crystal, both the components are solid at room temperature. The coke crystal is different from salt by the bonding between the two component. In salt, there is a proton transfer from acid to base. There is an ionic charge separation. In coke crystal, the bond is the bond between the two component is not ionic bond. It's just a hydrogen bonding or Van der Waals bonding by by stocking. It's just a weak bond. That's the main difference between salt and coke crystal. And next slide. Yes, depends upon the API. Coke crystal can be divided into four types. If the API is True polymorph, we call it as a co-crystal. If the API in the co-crystal is a salt, we call it as salt co-crystal. If the API in the co-crystal is a solvate, we call it co-crystal solvate or hydrate. If the API in the co-crystal is solvate form of salt, then call it as salt co-crystal solvate. These are the four types of co-crystal. We need a strong characterization team to differentiate it. Next slide. Yeah. Definition. 
In 2018, FDA clearly defined the what is coke crystal and its guideline. As per FDA, coke crystal or crystalline material composed of two or more different molecules, typically an API and a co-former in the same crystal lattice. This is a clear definition by FDA. And as, as per FDA, coke crystal enhance the bioavailability and stability of the drug product and also enhance the processability of API during the manufacturing of drug product. And it also provides opportunity for engineering solid state forms. We can call it as crystal engineering. Next slide. Uh, it's an interesting data retrieved by Professor Gautam Desi Raju. Over the past decade, a large number of research papers have been published in the pharmaceutical co crystal all over the world. You look at the data in 2010, the number of papers were around 100. In 2020, it's around 300. Three fold increase in pharmaceutical co crystal research. Just like polymorph and co crystal also got attention to the business. After FDA guideline, we could see a clear spike from 2018 onwards. Not only papers, many patents related to coke crystal and multidrug coke crystal have been approved in recent years. Next. This is a few example of coke crystal which is already available in the market as a drug product. Estloform oxalate, oxalic oxide coke crystal is a wonderful example of salt coke crystal. It is available in the market from 2009. Valsartan and Sacubitril drug drug coke crystal it's a it's a very good example of drug drug coke crystal marketed by novartis it's available in the market from 2015 and ertiglifosone and l biroglutamic acid is a coke crystal marketed by merck few more coke crystal are also under the line at the different phases of clinical trials so it further clarifies that you can choose a coke crystal for your drug product next selection of co-farmers the main challenges in pharmaceutical development is selection of co-farmers a predetermined library of pharmaceutically acceptable and approved co-farmer is already available the co-farmer is an excipient or a drug product it should be you know non-toxic and with no side effect everything added to food in the united states list that is called eafus list which is already available, which consists 3000 substances that are suitable as food additives. We also have grass list co formers. We can start from the grass listed co formers. And see, selection of co former is mainly done by different methods knowledge based methods and heat and trials method. We have a lot of ways to select a knowledge based method. Next. Yeah. Preparation of co crystal. See, co crystal can be prepared by solvent or solid based methods. In solid based method, the API and co former should be taken into a stoichiometric ratio and give a mechanical uh, energy like you know, pressing and crushing together with a motor and pistol or ball mill, jet mill like this. So, in this method, we can get co crystal without a solvent. There are a lot of methods by using solvent like evaporatic co-crystallization, cooling crystallization, anti-solvent method, slurry conversion, crystallization by reaction. These are the methods which use solvents in it. Recently, some new strategy also get into it like spray dry technique, supercritical fluid, uh, supercritical fluid technique, hot melt extrusion technique. These techniques have merged, start merging on preparation of co-crystals. Next. Uh, characterization of the coke crystal we always start from the melting point is a good technique dsc gives us a valuable information on the phase transition of the solid material so it give clear difference between the api co-former and the coke crystal next technique is vibrational frequency ir gives a valuable information on vibrational uh, frequency especially on uh, garboxylic acid group whether it is forming a hydrogen bonding or ionic bonding the bond energy is different you can clearly differentiate in ir and the next technique is single crystal xrd which gives complete information of the crystal structure the structure of the molecule on the crystal it's a very wonderful technique if you are not we can if you are, we cannot able to prepare always single crystal all the molecule will not give the single crystal every time so powder xrd also 
uh, gives valuable information it gives us the change in the crystal lattice that information we can able to derive from the powder xrd microscopic technique useful to see the changes in the crystal morphology polarized optical microscope thermal microscope scanning electron microscope which gives the changes in the discretion and the crystal morphology the most important technique is the solid state nmr technique it it gives a it's a quantitative and qualitative technique we can determine the molecular ratio molar ratio of the reaction mixture the type of hydrogen bonds in the given molecule where it is the hydrogen bond what type of bond this can be easily derived from solid state nmr teva api physical r&d team has very strong team to characterize the solid forms and to support the tm of filing with this i hand over the next session to diana diana please take forward thank you so hi to everyone and thanks to ananta for a great introduction into the awareness of how uh, co-crystals can be important as targets and how we can characterize them uh, and also prepare it for the beginning i would like to tell you a short story about my first contact with the co-crystal project a few years ago, we had a project uh, in which we found polymorphs that had better properties than the one uh, that was already uh, known. And we were very so celebrating, very happy. And a few months uh, after, uh, the originator published a um, patent application with the same uh, polymorph. At that moment, um, we were trying to think of uh, some um, better uh, polymorph and we asked ourselves uh, three questions. The first one, um, what is something that no one else would think of on the first sight? And uh, what is something that could be good or better than already known polymorphs? And what is the way to go around uh, the originator? So the answer to this, you probably already know, is a co-crystal. So this is just a little hint on a situation when co-crystal is really a good target and also a small introduction uh, into the real story that you will hear later on by my colleague uh, Maytel. Now let me take you through the next two sections of advantages and regulatory consideration. We can go to the Next slide. And uh, first we will start with uh, advantages. So this is the next slide. So just one moment. Okay. So by having the co-crystal, you first of all can have better chance to alternate and enhance properties than by, for example, having just an alternative polymorph. There can be situations when you need to look deeper into the properties of alternative polymorphs to find its advantages or the ones that are already known. By having the co-crystal, you certainly increase your chances to have something good enough or even better than something which is already known. Everything starts from the crystal structure. Nowadays, by using the crystal structure of the API, you can predict and design the co-crystal. The possibilities can be wide and the choice sometimes difficult to make, but it can be reduced by taking into account some of the parameters that already Ananta said. For example, if co-former is pharmaceutically acceptable or not. But there are also additional parameters connected with regulatory definitions that will be described in the next slide. By changing crystal structure, first of all, you change physical properties, such as density, crystal habits, solubility, stability, and melting point. These are the parameters that we are monitoring even in the micro scale. When you go to the next level, such properties have further influence on material characteristics, flowability, powder handling, tableting, and dissolution rate. Those are the relevant parameters that can give a lot of trouble or big advantages uh, in the production or in the formulation processes. On the top of this pyramid is the performance. 
which is defined by formulation complexity and bioavailability. On these parameters, the influence of properties below is obvious. So we can go to the next slide. Okay, so um, advantages that we certainly need to think of uh, is when there is a situation that you don't have alternative choice in the form of polymorphs, uh, and conventional approach would be to go with the amorphous or solid dispersion or the salt. All of these three potential targets have their own disadvantages that can be overcome by using a co-crystal. This is most important upon comparison with amorphous and solid dispersion. In the case of the co-crystal, you will most certainly have a crystalline form. Also, when having a co-crystal, there is no need for additional excipients to stabilize the formulation. By that, I don't mean that you will have API uh, without any excipients, but actually you will not need to alternate uh, formulation with respect that, uh, for example, amorphous tends to crystallize in some conditions and it needs some alternation formulation to keep him um, stabilized. Nevertheless, as we already presented before, co-crystal can have enhanced physical chemical properties, especially if it's compared to amorphous or solid dispersion. Further to this, there is a possibility of stabilizing a non-ionized and complex drug. So, uh, nowadays you have uh, more and more complex drugs uh, to be developed and uh, because of that, uh, there is a possibility of um, stability degree. So, um, in that case, you would probably uh, go for the uh, salt because salt can actually stabilize the compound. But uh, when you have a compound that it doesn't have functional groups that can form ionic bonds, then you would actually uh, go for the co-crystal and this would be the only option. Next point is if uh, the co-crystal is defined as just alternative polymorph, it can be then easily used to generate the IP. As the last point, we have possibility of shorten the drug development uh, process. What does it um, What does it mean? So, uh, with uh, comparison to the uh, to the amorphous uh, production, you will certainly have uh, processes like spray drying or lyophilization, and such processes uh, can uh, actually be very expensive. The coke crystal can be obtained by some convenient uh, methods, the crystallization uh, process, and because of that, uh, this process uh, can be cheaper and uh, also development uh, could be much faster. So we can go uh, to the next slide now. So, there are some additional advantages we can summarize in these four points. So the first one we already took, and this is just a, remind, a reminder of how important these enhanced physical properties of co-crystal are. The second uh, is regulatory definitions that we will cover in the following section. But the major fact is that the co-crystal in the USA is defined as just another polymorph which means that you don't need to conduct additional phase 3 cl clinical trials as it would be the case for having a salt as alternative. The third one is easy to understand. The co-crystal is yet another innovative polymer and that is equal uh, to any uh, other innovative choice and from such reason can be used for the IP generation and extension. The last point is directed toward the green chemistry. In the current concept of the chemical processes, the most of the compounds are prepared by batch crystallization and uh, in um, nowadays also uh, continuation uh, reaction processes. But all of these processes uh, use solvents. Uh, the batch uh, processes in the large amounts continues in the smaller amounts. 
but there is still a method uh, which is very applicable uh, to the co-crystal and is used in the large scale. This is the LEG method or the liquid assisted grinding which uses the minimum amount of solvent. So if a such process could be in the future scalable, then actually we will have a minimum amount of waste solvent which would actually uh, make process um, cheaper and also uh, more ecological um, uh, preferred. Okay, and now we can go to the next slide. So, uh, we finished uh, everything about uh, advantages and now we can go uh, to the regulatory consideration section, which is probably most important to a pharma. Next slide, please. So, when we are talking about co-crystal and regulatory, we mainly think about the US and the Europe stand on co-crystal definition and requirements. Generally, by FDA, the co-crystal are considered as alternative polymers that come within the group of the solvent and hydrate, but with the difference that the second component is solid state. It should be noted that the solution and solubility study needs to be conducted to see if API completely dissociates from co-former. Emma's point of view is different. They do not differentiate co-crystal and the salt, but uh, states that alternative target in the case of co-crystal needs to show same results in efficacy and safety. So we can go further to the next slide. So here is the table uh, which um, uh, compares differences in definition of some of the terms in FDA and EMA regulative. So, regarding regulatory category, as we already said, FDA considers co-crystal as yet another polymorph of API, while EMA is defining it as API. FDA uh, also defines composition of active pharmaceutical ingredients and food or drug-grade co-former, while EMA defines it similar but with a common to the six stoichiometric ratio. For interaction in a crystal, both FDA and EMA defines interaction as non-ionic and non-covalent. Also, co-former is defined by FDA as a excipient and by EMA as a regent. Both FDA and EMA state that co-crystal are similar to API, except if it shows differences in safety and efficacy. It's stated by EMA. FDA classifies co-crystal as polymorph, which we already stated, while EMA classifies this co-crystal as a salt. Regarding the regulatory pathway, if co-crystal shows similar behavior in terms of the safety and efficacy as API, there aren't any significant differences for the FDI or EMA. And this is also go for DM's requirements. Still, when we are talking about the co-crystal, there are additional regulatory approaches that we will consider on the following slide. So, please. Okay. So, API and co-former should exist in a natural state. This means non-covalent and non-ionic bonds. Here I need to underline that, for example, if you have an API in the form of salt, you can also have a co-crystal, because such compounds also have, can have functional groups that can form hydrogen bonds or non-ionic interactions. The one of the main roles is differences in delta pK. If the difference between the pK of the base and the pK of the acid is less than one, this combination is most probably the co-crystal. For example, if your API is a base and has pK5, to form a co-crystal you would probably need co-former with a pK higher than 4. And not to be confused with the formula, stronger acids have lower values of the pK, which sometimes can have a negative value of the pK. 
when used in the rating formula, minus plus minus gives plus, and the final result is higher than 1, which of course corresponds to the salt. Here, I would also suggest to experimentally measure the pK values in order to have more real results. Sometimes, using theoretical or predictive values can generate mistakes. The third rule is the situation of API and co-former with the aim to not influence pharmacological activity. If your co-crystal comes within this rule, you are on the safe side. We concluded the part of regulatory and now we will continue with one real story about co-crystal projects which will be presented by our colleague Meitao. Thank you, Diana. Hello, everyone. My name is Meital, and I would like to thank you for joining us, me and my team today. I hope you find this session useful for your future work. Next slide, Pam. In this part, I'm going to present to you one case of using Cochrystal as a target for formulation. We will go over the story of the developers. We will try to understand the development procedure and challenges. What was the reason to use Cochrystal? How did we decide that it's an appropriate target? And what did we, in, what did we ensure? How do we, did we ensure that it's a successful for formulation? Next slide. So the case I'm going to present to you today is ibrutinib. Ibrutinib used uh, for a cell cancer treatment. It was developed by PharmaCyclic and Johnson & Johnson and considered to be in top of three bestseller drugs in treating cancer in 2022. Next slide. So we started working on ibrutinib. As, all in, as in all our other projects, we, it's really important to read all the relevant literature regarding the product, process for preparation, characterization, and formulation. At first, we tried to find different polymorph of ibrutinib crystalline forms and amorphous. Once we had a few candidates, we characterized it and tried to evaluate whether this polymorph can be a target for formulation. This evaluation required information about its stability for long term, stability during formulation processes, solubility, and production factor like reproducibility as well as handling conditions. Next slide. So we find a few crystalline targets and amorphous. We started characterizing it in order to learn more about it. Evaluation of this target that we found led us to the conclusion that we should continue with the search. Our forms were not good enough for formulation. When you are evaluating your target, you should notice some disadvantage that uh, might be crucial, such as, um, Limited physical and chemical stability, very sensitive to production process, meaning every little change that you are doing, you are getting a different polymorph, more soluble, different in handling like hygroscopic material or tend to agglomerate, and limit crystallization options to control morphology. Once we concluded that our forms are not suitable enough for formulation, we initiated a co-crystal screening. Next slide. During the search of co-formers, we found several options to create a co-crystal. We went back to the lab and prepared it. After characterization, we found out that some of them were just a mechanical mixtures, some were polymorph of the co-former, and some were altern alternative salts. As a co-crystal, we identified three options for a co-former, benzoic, succinic, and pomaric acid. We try to prepare it in a higher scale and in a different ratio between the API and the co-former. Finally, ibrutinib hemifumari co-crystal was found to be the most appropriate target. Next. So why did we choose the hemifumari co-crystal? We evaluated with some tests that can predict its stability during formulation process by using different solvent and temperatures and found it to be the most stable. We continue working in the lab in order to develop a robust crystallization process. 
that will lead us to the same co-crystal with the same morphology in each production batch. We tested the solubility of the co-crystal and make sure it's chemically and polymorphically stable for long term. Next. During the time that we work on the right procedure for production, we started in parallel to characterize our co-crystal for the FDA submission. We followed the FDA guidelines step by step and found the needed scientific tool in order to prove the butinib hemifumaric is actually a co-crystal. We started, as Diana showed, with the delta PKA, showing that the gap between ibrutinib and the fumaric acid is less than one. You can see that ibrutinib has a pKa of 3.74, while fumaric acid has 3.03 .03 and 4.44. The next step was to find the right spectroscopic tool to show that it's a co-crystal and not alternative salt. For, that, for this, we use the single crystal XRD and solid state NMR. Next. Finally, following all regulatory requirements, our DMF file was submitted in US. We got a deficiency letters, and all the questions were answered in time and at a professional level that right after we got the tentative of FDA approval. Moreover, the FDA published recently on YouTube a short presentation summarizing all the required characterization for co-crystal submission. In this presentation, our DMF is being used as an, as an example. If you would like more information, please use the link on the slide. Next. So what was the most important things that you need in order to submit a co-crystal? What were the things that we had that found to be the most important for our success? First, and really crucial one, you need a deep chemical and analytical understanding. Really know your product. Second thing is agility and development. The ability to test few candidates in parallel and the ability to change quickly from one target to the other. You will also need a good collaboration with all your supporting units, quality control, patent department, regulatory, and marketing. You should always see your API in the eyes of your customer. What should be the right target for the formulation? What kind of knowledge you can provide to assist the formulator? And can you support in case you need a further characterization for a different kind of formulation? Finally, sharing your knowledge with your customer by a constant communication will be the factor that will ensure your success. So that's it for today. I think uh, it's a good time to move some, some of your questions. Tammy? Thank you so much, Metal, Diana, and Anenta. That was really, really informative and interesting. Uh, we, during the, while you were speaking, we received many, many questions. So I've just been going through some of them and we have a few minutes to answer a few of them. Um, so I'm going to dive straight in. So the first question we have is, how do you know if you've created a co-crystal or just a new polymorph of one of the compounds? Well, you should, um, you should use all your analytical tools in the lab in order to verify the identity of your compound. Uh, solid state NMR can be the right for this. Another thing that you can do is to initiate some experiments in the lab. For example, doing the same procedure just with one, a, just with a conformer or just with the API and check the results. Then you will be able to know. Thank you. Uh, another question that came in was, how is a co-crystal versus a polymorph in terms of stability? Diana, can you answer this? OK, so um, this is a very interesting uh, question. Uh, what we spoke about uh, in presentation is actually a possibility that co-crystal can be used to stabilize API uh, in a situation when you don't have functional groups to obtain uh, the salt. Uh, but actually, uh, having a co-crystal sometimes uh, can make you the wider choice um, in crystalli 
stabilization processes and in terms of that it can have a better stability even in the processes and also uh, later on uh, when it is isolated. Okay, thank you. I think that answered the question. Um, and next one is, can salt also be a co-crystal? Who's going to answer well, that one? Um, yes. I can answer that. <laughs> okay. So uh, we also talked partially uh, in the presentation about this. So if, um, if the question is directed to whether the co-crystal can be in the same time uh, also the soul, uh, the answer is no. You should define uh, your co-crystal by uh, the analysis that Ananta well spoke about. Uh, and also the, there is a possibility if you are having uh, salt, then you actually could have additional functional groups that can form hydrogen bonds and then actually you are having a salt with addition that it is the co-crystal with some other co-former. Okay, great, thanks Diana. Uh, we still have time for a couple more questions. I'm just looking at the time. Um, okay, how do you avoid solvate formation while preparing a co-crystal co through solution? Yeah. Yes, uh, the scope preparation. Yeah. Yes, the sol. Whenever no solvate preparation, solvate formation is a real problematic. Some of the API, you know, they have the affinity towards uh, most of the solvents. So it's always, uh, you know, whenever we try to prepare co-crystal through solvent-based method, we always end up with the solvate of the particular API. The reason behind is the the solvent activity is the main factor so we need to play with the solvent activity uh, of the api so what we have to do is we can do two things one is we can choose a solvent with high solubility of the co-former instead of the api so when the co-former will change the solvent activity uh, so that the api may not have chance to form a solvate and another way is we can choose a solvent mixture. When we use a solvent mixture, you know, it should lower the risk of solvate formation, decrease the solvent activities towards that, you know, uh, API. In this way, two way, you can avoid the solvate formation. I prefer the solvent, solvate, solvent mixture method. Thank you, Ananta. Thank you. I think we have time for one last question. Um, so the last question is, how hard is it to get regulatory approval for drug co-crystals? Well, it's a big question because it's, uh, you know, uh, regulatory part uh, contains not just the physical uh, part, but from a physical point of view, if you follow all the FDA requirements or regulatory requirements and you have a highly professional R&D and supporting unit, I think we, you will be okay. Fabulous. So thank you so much, Anenta, Diana, and Maital. We really appreciate your time. And thank you to everyone for joining us. Um, I just wanted to say that if we didn't get a chance to answer your question, then don't worry, one of our team will reach out to you after the webinar and answer it. So thanks again and see you at the next webinar.